Hello, today is January 5th, and uh, today we are reading our second reading for this Sunday, the baptism of our Lord, which is the first Sunday in this new season of Epiphany. I'm home today, uh, and that's just because uh, we are sitting in the middle of a snowstorm, um, and I am able to do all my work from home, so I'm staying home as much as I possibly can to stay off the roads. Uh, I'm hoping that if you are in the same situation today and uh, throughout this month, that you are able to stay home as much as possible. And if you can't, um, hoping and uh, praying that you stay safe on the roads, you're able to get home safely. On to our readings, or our reading, our very short reading for the second, uh, our New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. That is the whole of the reading. That's it. Um, and in some ways... It is a slightly unsatisfying reading uh, because it gives uh, basically a snippet, uh, a peek into a longer story. So, what is that story? Where does this, where does this story about um, there are believers in Samaria that seem to have been baptized, but the Spirit hasn't come to them? So Peter and John have to go and bring the Spirit to them. What is going on here? Okay, well, first off, we already, if you are somewhat familiar with the story, with the Gospels at least, um, you know perhaps that there is a distinction or a division between uh, Jewish people, uh, those, of, those people of Judah, and the people of Samaria, called Samaritans. We have a story called the Good Samaritan. Um, and Samaritans are basically the people who lived in the northern kingdom. So they would have been considered uh, living in the place where the old kingdom of Israel was. Um, and they were descendants both of the Jewish people who had been living there, or the, the Israelites who had been living there. And then after the northern kingdom is destroyed, they get displaced somewhat, or they, get, they lose their political control and uh, new, new groups of people come in, populate, intermix, and the beliefs of Israel are mixed in some ways with the beliefs of other uh, ethnic and national groups. So Samaritans are viewed by uh, the people of Jerusalem, of Judah, the southern kingdom, um, who believe themselves to be the true heirs of Israel, of David especially, they view the Samaritans, there was a view of the Samaritans as having lost their way generations ago. That Samaritans in some ways, um, for, for the believer who held the temple in Jerusalem to be extremely important, the particular holy site for the worship of the true God, they believed those Samaritans who had nothing to do with the worship with the worship at the temple, they believe them to basically uh, be outside of the promise of Israel and that all of their claims about worshiping God, uh, worshiping Yahweh especially, to be false. Uh, so there's this deep cultural division between the Jewish people who worship at the temple and Samaritans who claim some kind of kinship but there is a, a deep uh, cultural and religious division there. When Jesus teaches about Samaritans, um, he, for a particular reason, chose to have a Samaritan be uh, the one ethical good person that helps the person on the road uh, outside of Jerusalem. It's not the person who's in, who obeys the law, who worships at the temple. Instead, it's the Samaritan who shows the true spirit of the law. 
who shows true love uh, or genuine love for their neighbor. So Jesus is being was being provocative, uh, knowingly provocative when he chose a Samaritan, who are, uh, as the beliefs at the time, uh, who are the breakers of the law. Jesus was being provocative by saying, "No Samaritan, this Samaritan, this imaginary Samaritan, is the truest keeper of the law, of the true law, the heart of the law, which is to love your neighbor." as yourself. They're the ones who fulfill the law, you are failing the law. As you could as you could sort of get from what Jesus is saying. So we come to this Acts passage with all those things happening. And Samaria, there are so from this very beginning of the church. This is early in the book of Acts. The church is clustered in Jerusalem, or the core of the church is clustered in Jerusalem. The apostles are there. And Jesus has given an instru the instruction to the apostles at the very beginning of Acts to go and make disciples in Judea and Samaria and parts around. So Jesus has specifically instructed them not just to go to Jews or to the Jewish folk living in that region in Judea, but to go beyond, and especially to go to the Samaritans. Samaritans. Okay, so clearly there is something happening, and the there are Samaritans that, before the apostles go there, are already hearing the news of Jesus. There's a popular movement that is already happening outside of the disciples' control. The disciples are not the ones who have done this. They've been explicitly commanded by Jesus to go and make disciples, to go and t tell people about Jesus, to baptize. And the disciples are not the ones doing it. So Jesus has told them to do it. They haven't done it. And then it happens without them. And this is already, you can see, there is a in, in this book of Acts, there's a snowball effect happening where people are who were followers of John, who were perhaps among the crowds that Jesus was teaching, they're glomming on without any of the official leaders uh, of the official church being part of what is happening. There are baptisms, there's sort of wildcat baptisms happening everywhere. And so the, the text preserves this event of just natural outpouring of religious fervor, of identifying with, with Jesus, without uh, perhaps an understanding that the disciples maybe would be claiming to have. And so the text preserves this, and it says the Spirit had not yet come to them. In some ways, the whole book of Acts is about the Spirit coming to the core of the church, coming to the disciples gathered at Pentecost, and then exploding forward. And the text says the people had been baptized into Jesus Christ, but they had not been baptized into the Spirit. So it says that people were confessing the name of Jesus, perhaps without really understanding what it meant. And I think what this text is pointing to is that it's not just about confessing Jesus. It's not just about saying, I'm, I'm a Christian, I claim Jesus' name, that's me. It's about being connected uh, to the, the historic church. It's about being connected to a community of the church. That the Spirit does come to individuals. It comes to each of us as believers in baptism, but it is it, it moves through the body of, of the church. What Peter and John are doing when they go and lay hands on these people, these people who have a fire for God, have a fire for Jesus, but maybe don't quite know exactly what is what is going on uh, when they say that, exactly what they're signing up for. Peter and John are not rejecting them because they didn't come from the official church. Peter and John are, in fact, reaching out and adopting and claiming them. So I, I see this text as both a, um, 
a way for us understanding how the spirit works. That is, people are reached uh, are uh, reached by the the fire of faith. They they you are enlightened when you first begin to to grasp the promise of Jesus, and then the church reaches out. And when the church is doing what it's supposed to, it reaches out, grasps those believers firmly, and says, "You are loved." The Spirit it claims you, and Jesus redeems you. And so it's not that the disciples control the Spirit, it's that they are being driven forward to do what they have been commanded to do by Jesus. So uh, that's it's a short gospel, but it contains so much history, and it contains so much deep theology about what the Spirit does and how it drives us forward to meet those who... Uh, want to want to find out who Jesus is. I've gone way over. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. I hope you are staying safe and warm out there. Okay, bye-bye.